Hello everyone and a very warm welcome to another lesson. In this lesson, I'm going to be teaching you about literary techniques. Remember, literary techniques are also called stylistic devices or stylistic features. Now, this is part two. I have already uploaded a video on part one. I would recommend that you have a look at part one, where I talked extensively about imagery. In this lesson, I'm going to be talking about juxtaposition juxtaposition now perhaps you're a student who is studying literature and you need to know all the different types of literary techniques for your text analysis or for your commentary writing if that is the case then you are in the correct channel remember to subscribe to the channel for more videos more lessons on literary techniques now let us begin what is juxtaposition juxtaposition is when two things are placed side by side for comparison, often to highlight the contrast between them. So when you have a writer or a poet or a playwright placing two things side by side for comparison, often to highlight the contrast between them, then we can talk about juxtaposition. When you juxtapose things, it means you contrast them. And in the process of contrasting things, then you really are also comparing them. So juxtaposition entails comparison and contrast. Let us look at some examples. Example one. You will soon be asked to do great violence in the cause of good. That is a quote from The Yellow Birds by Kevin Powers. You will soon be asked to do great violence in the cause of good. Now, you can see in that quote, we have two words that are juxtaposing each other, that contrast each other, and that is violence and good. You will soon be asked to do great violence in the course of good. Now, remember, for the purposes of text analysis, it's not enough to just identify a quote in which you have juxtaposition. You are expected to explain the effect of that juxtaposition. What do I mean by effect? In other words, what did the writer want to communicate through the use of that juxtaposition? What message was the writer trying to put across or to relay or to communicate to the readers when they put that juxtaposition in that sentence or in that quote or in that paragraph or in that poem or in that stanza of a poem. Now, in this case, in the case of our quote here, what 
Kevin Powers was trying to relay is that violence is almost never good. But it can be considered right in terms of war. In his novel, Kevin explores the costs of war and its effects on home life, if you have read the novel. He uses the war in Iraq to illustrate the different devastations facing soldiers being asked to perform for the good of the country. So in this particular context, this particular quote, you will soon be asked to, to do great violence in the cost of good. What it really means is that violence is almost never good, but it can be considered right in terms or in times of war. So in other words, in times of war, when soldiers have to protect their countries, when they have to protect the safety of the citizens, then violence is justifiable. It is a good thing. It is right. It is moral. It is justifiable. So here you have the use of the contrast of the words violence and good to accentuate, to underscore the fact that in, despite the fact that um, violence is usually regarded as, as something negative, in this case, it is justifiable. Now, let us look at example two. This is a quote from A Midsummer's Night's Dream by William Shakespeare. Merry and tragical, tedious and brief, that is hot ice. Wanderers, strange. Okay, that is hot ice and wanderers, strange, snow. How shall we find the concord of this discord? Okay, merry and magical, tedious and brief, that is hot ice and wanderers, strange, snow. Okay, how shall we find the concord of this discord? Now, in this case, we have juxtaposition employed or used in uh, various um, words. Look at merry, merry and tragical. Okay, merry and tragical, tedious and brief, hot and ice, wanderers and strange, concord and discord. All these words that have been placed say, side by side are words that mean the opposite of each other. Okay. They, like for example, how can things be merry and tragic? How can something be tedious and brief? If something is tedious, then it means it, you spend a very long time trying to do it. But then on the other hand, you have the word brief, which means that it takes a very short time. So you have that contrast between tedious and brief. And then once more you have hot and then you have ice. One is very warm, the other one is very chilly. Then you have wondrous and then strange. And then you have concord and discord. So in this case, Shakespeare wants to take his characters to a place where there is harmony, not discord, merry and tragical, tedious and brief. 
that is hot ice and wondrous strange snow. How shall we find the concord of this discord? Okay. How shall, how shall we find harmony in this chaos? Because the chaos, within the chaos, you have merry and you have tragic tragedy. You have tediousness and you have brief, brief uh, situations. You have hotness and you have ice. You have wonder and you have wondrous things and you have strange snow. So in other words, what these opposite words uh, project or relay is a state of chaos. It is a state of chaos. And that is why he ends that um, phrase with the rhetoric question, how shall we find the concord of this discord? In other words, how shall we find harmony in the face of so much chaos? How shall we find harmony? How shall we find peace in the face of such turmoil? Okay. Now, let us move on to example three. That is, it is a quote from Good Night by Dylan Thomas. Okay. Now, curse, bless me now with your fierce tears, I pray. Curse, bless me now with your fierce tears, I pray. Do not go gentle into that good night. Okay. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. Curse, bless me now with your fierce tears, I pray. Do not go gentle into that good night. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. So once more there, you can see that the writer has employed juxtaposition because we have words that are opposite in meaning being placed close or side by side. We have curse, we have bless. Okay. We have um, good night and the dying of light. With one of them, the light is almost dying. It's coming to an end. And with the other one, you have a good night. So you have juxtaposition there. Okay. And like I said earlier on, it's not enough to uh, identify juxtaposition in, in a text. No, you, you need to go ahead and explain the effect that is achieved through the use of that form of juxtaposition. What is the effect? What is the writer actually trying to relay or communicate through the use of that juxtaposition? And in this case, Thomas is juxtaposing the struggle for life and the acceptance of death. He is juxtaposing the struggle. He is contrasting the struggle for life and the acceptance of death death. He is comparing and contrasting the struggle for life and the acceptance of death. Death is often referred to as darkness and we see that here with the dying of light. Okay? Death is often referred to as darkness and we see that here with the dying of light. So in other words, really, what Thomas is, 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 uh, achieves through the use of this juxtaposition is that he manages to compare and contrast or juxtapose the struggle for life and the acceptance for death. Now, 
Let's move on to the last example. Let us move on to the last example. And this is a quote from A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. Maybe you're familiar with it, maybe you're not. It is a tale, it is a, a, a quote from A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom. It was the age of foolishness. It was the epoch of incredulity. It was a season of light. It was a season of darkness. Now, you cannot get a better uh, example of juxtaposition here because, because in this case, you have um, two things really being placed side by side for comparison, okay? And through that, the contrast be between them becomes extremely distinct. The, it was the best of times, and then it was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom. It was the age of foolishness. It was the season of light. It was the season of darkness. So you have that juxtaposition between best and worst, wisdom and foolishness, light and darkness. So Dickens here makes um, wonderfully obvious that he is using juxtaposition. He writes in complete opposites, indicating it was both the best of times and the worst of times. Now, how can this be? Now, well, much of life is a mixture of highs and lows. Some have it all, others have nothing. Here, Dickens is trying to underscore that fact. Okay? Driving the readers to understand and reflect on the differences in society and within the context of his novel it is the differences in society before the French Revolution. So through the use of juxtaposition Charles uh, Dickens manages to underscore or to relay this social economic differences between different classes of people he manages to communicate that idea that um that life that much of life is really a mixture of highs and lows some have it all others have nothing okay and that is why there is this juxtaposition of the best of times and the worst of times, the age of wisdom and the age of foolishness, the season of light and the season of darkness. Now, this brings me to the end of this lesson. I hope you now have a better understanding of what juxtaposition is. Um, remember that it's not enough to simply identify juxtaposition from a poem or from a text. You're expected to uh, explain the effects that each specific juxtaposition achieves within the context of the text that you are studying, be it a poem, be it a passage, be it a play, be it a novel, and so on. Now, if you have any questions on juxtaposition, feel free to put them in the comment section. It would be nice for you to write some examples of juxtaposition in the comment section. Let us interact as much as possible in the comment section. But before we go, please do me a favor. If you found this lesson useful, subscribe to the channel, 
and give this video a thumbs up and share this video with your friends, your fellow students, your colleagues, and anybody else that you think needs it. Thank you very much and see you in our next lesson where we will be talking about another type of literary technique. Thank you very much and bye-bye.